Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're here at the Silmar Agricultural Learning Center. And um, to my left here is um, Steve Liss, who's a teacher here. And he's going to share a little bit more about what this program is all about. Steve. Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm the teacher and the program facilitator for Silmar Agriculture Learning Center. If you pan over there, you can see the entrance. Uh, this is the start of the garden. This is kind of like where we begin. This is our pollinator garden. So over here we have our lavender farm. I have eight different kinds of lavender in here. Our uh, primary purpose is obviously for the bees, but we use the lavender for oils and we mix it in honeys, teas, with some medicinal portion of our unit. Over here is our pollinator garden. And then we have everything from the milkweed that attracts the monarch butterfly over here to a lipstick salvia for the hummingbirds. Beautiful. We got the uh, strawberry guava for the hummingbirds. We have some lantana for the moth, some butterfly bush. I threw in these Iceland poppies just as a decor, but I found out that they're very good to attracting flies and bees, which both are pollinators. So this was an experiment I took on about a year ago, and as you can see, a total success. So anyhow, we're doing an experiment today and trying out some products with Charles and Brad. And um, we're painting our trees. We have a specimen fruit tree farm in the back and we're putting some protective coating to prevent sunburn and do all these other insects, sunburn, rodents. We're gonna prevent them all with this product. So today we've got four of his students here with us and they're gonna be applying the product. We wanna see how far each of these cans will go go on you know some smaller plants and then more established fruit trees within the garden. Um, today we're um, donating to the Silmar Agricultural Program three of these spray bottles which um, they're going to use one in the garden and they keep um, a couple extra on hand. We're also donating um, two of the color greens, two of the color browns, two of the color white, um, Ivory Organic cans as well. I've got it here in our Home Depot Bucket. Home Depot is one of our 12 retailers that you can um, shop for online or um, and some of them have it in the store as well. And then Brad and I also have a little gift certificate um, which we want to share with Steve for all of the beneficial knowledge you've shared with us about your program, the knowledge that you have specific about plants, the generosity you've given to our community um, when you came and visited us last month. Um, and I'll put that YouTube link where he spoke up in the um, right hand corner of this video and um, And just the donations and the contribution he gives to his um, Community and also greater Los Angeles with growing food growing trees um, Adding color for all the local schools. I don't know if you want to add a little bit more about that, but this is you said this it is all. from Thank us. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I like your support and I'm uh, eager to do more partnership with you collaborating Hopefully we uh, do more of these. Wonderful. Thank you Thanks so much. Again. Behind me we've got dozens and dozens of fruit trees and we're going to be um, applying a concept which has been used for hundreds if not thousands of years by farmers and it's a process called whitewashing. And we're going to be using Ivory Organics as the product for whitewashing being that it's organic and it's got these seven natural oils which will naturally repel insects as well as rodents while also offering the defense of what whitewashing typically does. Which, what whitewashing is generally performed for is typically sun scald which is a phenomenon that happens in the winter and I'm going to describe that definition in just a minute as well as sunburn which is a phenomenon during the summer. We're going to talk about all this and more in just a few minutes but let's take a quick tour of some of the fruit trees that are here behind me that we're going to be treating. Check these out. So here we are now in the middle of the fruit orchard here at the school and um, one of the things I wanted to share with you is, you know, not all of the parts of the plant are particularly susceptible to sunburn and sun scald. In the northern hemisphere, it's the southern part of the plant that's most susceptible to sunburn and even the southern western part, which is where the sun will end up towards the end of the day and where it's most intense, is even more damaging. But the south side of the plant, and if you take a look over here, and I'm using this as an example being when you newly install your plant in your garden, it's got, it's, it just doesn't have the structure and it doesn't have a canopy in the shade to, to basically protect the lower branches and tree trunks. So when it comes to the installation of a new plant, it's especially important to whitewash your plants. Um, and again, Ivory Organics has it offered, I didn't, I didn't make this point earlier, but it's offered in the colors white, green, and brown. So you can also have the aesthetics 
beauty of the product as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be white. So just like wearing a shirt, you're getting protection from the sun no matter what the color of your shirt is. And the, um, the colors of the product are all light to naturally reflect as much light as possible. So when it comes to the um, direction of the sun, you can see that the sun is on this side, but it will never touch the back side of the tree. The back side is always going to be in the shade no matter what time of the day is. When you're in the northern hemisphere, and let me show the, the, the globe over here, when you're over here in Los Angeles, California, which is where we're at right now, or Silmar specifically, the sun is hovering over the equator. So the plants that are over here are, are most exposed to the sun that are, you know, that are on the south side. The sun is warming and heating and reflecting on the south side of the plants. Um, if the plants were looking towards the equator, um, it would be the south you know, facing side of the plant that would be exposed to the sun. I hope this makes sense. Whereas if we travel now to Australia, and now we're below the equator, so here we are in Australia facing north towards the equator, it's gonna now be the northern side of the plant that's gonna be exposed to the sun and, and most susceptible to sunburn and sun scald issues. So um, if you didn't know this before, it's the south side of your plant that needs the most protection. So if you're only gonna coat, you know, and you don't have enough product to coat all of your trees, if you just do the south side of your plant, you'll reap all of the benefit because the north side of the plant in the northern hemisphere is not affected by the sunburn issues as greatly. Um, let's take a tour of some of the other highlights within this garden. Check these out. So a publication by Gardena.com and they talk about whitewashing tree trunks. That's the, um, the title of this article. And they talk about um, the phenomenon of sun scald, which is a winter phenomenon and they attribute the majority of sun scald damage to occur starting um, January through February. And the issue that's happening is that you'll have winter days where the temperatures are hot and the saps and the fluids will start moving in the upper part of the tree, but the roots are still dormant in the cold, damp soil. And that discrepancy between the two results in um, plant um, tissue death and damage to the plant structure. Um, another issue with the sun um, scald issues in the winter is that just like, and this is again the article written by Gardena, they refer it to um, the pipes bursting in your house from the pipes just becoming frozen. Similarly, there's pipes going up and down the tree um, through the cambium um, layer of the plant, transporting the water and the sugars up and down the tree. So in the winter, if the pipes freeze, there's a risk that those pipes can be damaged by the warm afternoon sun followed by the freezing cold nights. Um, that discrepancy can cause the pipes and the vessels within the plant to rupture. And one of the ways historically that gardeners and farmers, um, you know, going back hundreds if not thousands of years would prevent sun scald damage to their plants would be to use a whitewashing um, system. And there's another article which is um, by SF Gate, I believe it's San Francisco Gate, um, and you can um, research them. And they talk about whitewashing as a meth method that's often used by commercial tree growers, but home gardeners can also make the method to protect their trees. Fruit trees in particular, particularly, are often targeted for whitewashing to coat the bark. Um, making whitewash paint at home is effective and cost-effective way to minimize damage to your trees. Um, and let me um, share with you the purpose here. We can read this together real quick. It talks about whitewashing. It says, whitewashing covers the trunk of the tree to protect it primarily from sun scald. Even though sunburn is an important point, I'll, I'll share that in a minute. The sun's rays heat the bark, causing it to come out of dormancy, while the roots and other unexposed areas remain dormant. Because the roots remain dormant, they cannot provide the necessary water to the bark that is now active and death to the warm tissue can occur. Another tree um, threat to the trees is splitting that sometimes occurs when the heated bark cools too quickly at night. And these openings have a pathway for pest and disease to invade the tree. Whitewashing white helps to keep these trees dormant by reflecting light to keep the bark cool. And then they talk about latex paint, and this is a big no-no. They talk about exterior latex paint being the choice. And then they talk about using three pounds of table salt as another method with um, calcium hydroxide. Um, the first thing I wanna share with you is, um, so they're talking about the bark cracking from sun scald, and that is one thing that is 
readily available, but as we just um, read about Gardena.com, they said the damage might not even be noticeable and there could be damage happening within the tree um, from the sun scald phenomenon. But we're also gonna take a look at it. They're saying the predominant issue for whitewashing your plant is, is sun scald protection, but there's also sunburn issues, which we're gonna visit here in the, um, the Silmar Agricultural Garden Center, a garden where they've got these citrus trees that are, um, that are severely damaged by sunburn. And the now barkless wood, as a result of the sunburn, is now an entryway for the beetles and termites, which we're gonna see in just a minute. Um, in regards to methods, one of the most common ways for um, creating a whitewash is using latex paint. But if you are to use a latex paint, most growers will um, recommend using an interior latex paint over an exterior, whereas this article um, recommends using exterior latex paint. Latex paint has a lot of chemicals in it, and it's the reason for the formulation for Ivy Organics being an all organic, natural based product that's now registered material for use in organic agriculture. Latex paint is not, it's a chemical. Um, and most of them will have on their label that's a known carcinogenic and it's got these chemicals in it that are also algicides and fungicides. The goal with latex paint is to last decades if not longer um, and it does not break down. It's meant to hold on to the plant and, and, and stay there um, and even as the bark eventually wears off the plant just as the skin on our bodies eventually you know fall off you know and, and, and get replaced with new skin the tree bark is letting go of its bark as well as that latex paint that's going to remain in your soil for a very long period of time. Exterior latex paint has even more chemicals in the product which um, which again offers more algicides, more fungicides and more protection to the exterior elements. Um, so when it's a decision to come between interior and exterior latex paint, most growers will side with using interior white latex paint and then this idea of using table salt dissolved in water with calcium hydroxide never use table salt in your garden we do we've done a couple educational videos talking about epsom salt which introduced sulfur and magnesium into your garden but sodium chloride is not a recommended practice for bringing into your garden so um, two mistakes I saw with the San Francisco Gate article. So now let's take a look at some of the projects that a few of the students here are applying the Ivory Organics to a lot of the fruit trees that are here behind me, um, including this beautiful, I believe it's a plum nectarine. We're going to take a look at the name of it, but look at how beautiful it is with the um, reddish, purplish colors and it's loaded with fruit. I'll share with you in just a second. But we've got about a half a dozen students out here painting on Ivory Organics, spraying Ivory Organics on the plant, and we're going to see, you know, the reasons for why to do it, and we're gonna see the benefits that our products are offering those plants. Let's check these out. So behind me, we've got a citrus tree, a very old mature tree that's been neglected, and the pruning method you know, applied has been less than par. If we take a look over here, for one, this branch, which was once just as large as all these other branches, supported a lot of fruit. It must have broke under the weight of the fruit, and they pruned it like so. Um, with no branches or any life coming off of it. Ideally, this branch should have been pruned um, more close to the central trunk so that as the plant expands, it can eventually seal and heal over. But in this scenario, that's never gonna happen. Another interesting phenomenon is, and I can tell that once upon a time, all of these branches around, with the exception of the central leader, were all exposed to too much sun. And just like my arms that are extended out, the light was just too intense for too long year after year to the point that it basically removed all of the bark and all of the skin. We're talking about not first degree burns. A first degree burn on my skin or on a plant would just be a discoloration. Second degree burn, maybe some cracking. But this is a third degree burn if we can analogize a human burn to a plant burn where it's now lost its skin. All of the skin on the top part of the plant, if you want to come in a little closer, um, you can take a look that it's completely burned off on the top even though now it's in the shade because it's got a canopy, but on, on those years when it was in the sun, all of the skin got burned off the top and the bottom is what's now supporting the sugars and the waters through the plants and offering life to the tree. And take a look over here, you can see another example as well. Same phenomenon. The top of the branch is burnt, it has no bark, it's a barkless top of the um, branch and the lower part of the branch, which is unaffected by the overexposure of sun starting at this line down, is basically what's intact and offering the waters and the sugars to the rest of the plant. 
Um, if you come in a little closer, I should have um, pointed this out while I had you here. You can take a look that because now it doesn't have bark, there's holes caused by beetles and termites that are now going to be hollowing out the center of the plant. And it's more intense if you take a look at this end over here. And this here was another pruned branch as well. And you can see that it's completely being hollowed out and the wood destroying organisms are working their way into the center of the tree and ultimately are going to shorten the life of this plant. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to have one of the students here at the Silmar Agricultural Learning Center. They're going to now start applying the Ivory Organics on here for the goal of um, increasing the longevity and the life of this plant so we can get as many more years out of this productive citrus tree. Let's check out a couple more citrus here in the garden. So behind me is a bear's lime tree. The student just already um, coated it with the color brown Ivory Organics so you can see what that looks like. Uh, you can see over here is a pruned branch. Again, it should have been brought in a little bit closer so it can heal over better. Um, but there's a prune branch here, a prune branch there, but they coated all the way down to the roots that are exposed at the ground level and went all the way up to the lower canopy of the tree. The other branches up above um, have been left alone, but we'll show you what can also be done with the foliar spray, Ivory Organics, and let's check those out. But so far he coated three of the trees and he's still left with about a half of a can. And you can see the size of these trees. The instructions on the can say you can coat at least a dozen of the three gallon um, tree sizes. Um, but we want to see how, how far we can stretch it out with a larger size tree such as these trees here in the garden. So just take a look at um, how well he coated these trees with the Ivory Organics color brown. And you can walk. And over here is another tree. And now here we are on the fourth citrus tree. We're now um, applying the Ivory Organics color brown to this one as well. And you can see that we're just coating it like so. Making sure that all of that exposed wood is protected and eventually the goal is the cambium tissues will expand and grow over the um, exposed wood and it can ultimately heal. And let's take a look at how much product you got left in the can. So we're a little bit past halfway right now. So we got about, about a third of a can left. Great job. We had four students helping us out. One's working in the citrus garden. One had the color white. The one in the citrus garden was using color brown. One student had color white. One student had color green. And one person had the spray bottle. And let's see how far they went with the product in the time that they had. Over here, they um, coated the peach tree. As you can see, it could have gone a little bit lower. The goal is to coat all of the exposed surfaces. Um, so peach tree, avocado tree, and then behind me, we did the Haas avocado, and we also did an apricot tree, another avocado tree, and a peach tree, and over here, this last one he was able to um, coat is the Fuyu persimmon. And if you take a look after his one, two, three, four, five, six, seven medium, you know, medium sized trees, you can see how much product it still has left. We're definitely still more than halfway in regards to product. And this is just applying a single coat, which is all the time that he had. Now let's take a look at the color green. Let's check these out. So over here we coated um, a jujube with the color green, Ivory Organics 3-in-1 um, Plant Guard. And you can see there's three in this container, which he coated nicely. And over here we um, have a guava tree also coated in the color green. And if you take a look, you can see again, he's got more than halfway of product left in the container. Check that out. So he's still more than halfway. Um, and the last thing I want to share with you is the spray. And we sprayed about six or seven trees. And let me share with you first the two small ones that we did. Um, if you take a look at the avocados, and avocados are especially susceptible to sunburn. So what we did is we took the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Spray and we just simply sprayed it on top of the leaves. And this was done about 15 minutes ago, so it has since dried on. So now we got an organic foliar um, sunblock spray. But take a look at the tips that were unprotected from last week when we had days that were approaching 100. And you can see that it's already starting to burn the leaves over here and burn the leaves over there. You can hear it's all crunchy right in there. Um, that's all damage caused by sunburn that otherwise would not have happened had it been protected. The Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Spray will keep your plant several degrees cooler to prevent um, such damaging results. And let's take a look at one more 
um, avocado over here that was also coated. Then you can take a look at the results of the leaves that are just a little bit more pale with the applications of the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 spray. And let's see what other trees he was able to coat. We did some fairly large semi-dwarf trees on that side of the garden, so follow me. We also coated these four fruit trees that are behind me. And take a look at how large these are. He used the same bottle of the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 plant guard spray to coat all of these leaves. Take a look um, at the application of the product. So you can see he coated the leaves. He also got into the um, canopy as well and coated the, the lower branches and trunks. But this creates a very light protection to the plant to basically, again, offer protection from sunburn, sun scald, insects, and rodents. Um, let's take a look. So this here is a cherry tree. Um, over here, an apricot tree. And you can take a look at the leaves again. How they're coated with the spray that has since dried. And then we did this apricot tree over here. You can take a look at that, offering some sunblock protection. And if we come, and even over here, take a look at this. So he sprayed the leaves and even the fruit. Fruit are sometimes susceptible to sunburn as well, and especially on the south side of the tree, and I'm gonna to explain to you why. Um, but even the fruit can be coated, and if you do, I usually recommend using like a dish sponge, um, you know, that you use for cleaning your dishes, and just basically wiping the product off the fruit before you consume it. Um, you know, for those skins that you're gonna eat. But for your avocados and your citrus and other fruits where it's just on the outside, your lemons is another example. I had lemons that suffered from sunburn that were not coated last year. Um, and especially with the use of, I gotta point this out real quick, using garden oils such as neem oils and mineral oils and other oils to control pests within your garden, that's actually gonna drive the temperature of the plant up as those oils on the leaf are gonna um, increase the temperature. Um, what Ivory Organics will do is you apply the oils at night and in the morning, apply the ivory organics to keep your plants cool from the damaging sunburn the following day. Uh, let's take a look at one other tree that we're able to coat. This one over here I'm not familiar with, but it says it's a, uh, a variety of cherry. Over here it says um, a cherry patanga um, grafted vermilion. So um, the leaves just look a little different than the typical cherries that I'm used to seeing, but this here is another cherry variety, and we're also able to coat the leaves on this as well. And take a look at all of these starter plants that the students prepare. Thousands and thousands of plants that go right back into the community, helping a lot of families that are in need to produce food. And for a lot of the schools in the area, some colors. We've got an excellent program over here. Take a look at that. There's even some more. We've got some milkweed plants, they got some plumeria cuttings back there. It's on and on and on. This school also receives a lot of donations and they share these trees with a lot of the people in need within the community. But these are all fruit trees, uh, including pomegranates over here in front of us, some peaches. You can take a look at some of these beautiful blossoms. Take a look at that. What a beautiful flower. Let's take a look at that variety right here. Called Flowering Peach Peppermint. And it definitely looks like a peppermint style. Look at how beautiful that flower is. Here's some apple trees. And over here they got some weeping mulberry trees. Look at how beautiful these plants are. So instead of just growing tall, you can see that it grows up. And then the branches, the reason for the name weeping is that they come down off the plant and they grow back down towards the ground. And look at how many fruit are in here. What a beautiful plant. Check out these beautiful roses. And then right behind it, his tomatoes that he's got growing in these 30 gallon containers, which is what Steve List recommends as being the best way of growing your tomatoes if you're gonna put them in a container. Take a look at how huge those containers are. And here are the plants, all grown organically. And what he's also done, let me um, point out an example, it's over here. You can take a look that all he's doing is taking these bamboo sticks and then running them through periodically. And he just basically um, runs the sticks throughout the cage structure and the cage structure stands I'm six feet tall at least seven feet above the ground so what a beautiful concept for growing your tomatoes um, and over here we got some strawberries 
more tomatoes. Back there, some basil. I'm gonna get some more. If you've enjoyed this educational moment by Ivory Organics, be sure to like it. And most importantly, by subscribing below, you'll be connected to all these other educational gardening videos. Thanks again for watching, and happy gardening.